In this video, we will learn how to factor binomials using the SOAP method. So there is a formula that mathematicians found that will always work when factoring sum and difference of cubes. So the formulas right here will always work. The way I'm going to demonstrate in this video is how to use these formulas but using a mnemonic that is going to help us remember the symbols in this formula. If we take a look at this example here, we can see that this is a sum because it has a plus sign right here. So the first thing you're going to do is ask yourself, what times itself three times will result in the first term here, x cubed? And what times itself three times will result in 8? So x times x times x will make x cubed. And 2 times 2 times 2 will result in 8. So since we're able to find such numbers or variables, that means that we can utilize the formulas here. Now because this is a sum, we're going to use the top formula here, and it says a and b, so we're going to let a in the formula be x, and we're going to let b in the formula be 2. So wherever there's an a in the formula, we'll put x, so we'll put an x here, we'll put an x here, here, and then wherever there's a B, we're going to put a 2. So therefore, the formula is telling us we would have X plus 2 in parentheses. And then we would have X squared minus, we don't write things, we don't write this as X2. Instead, we write it as 2X. And then 2 squared makes 4. So I'm going to show you a different way using a mnemonic that will help us remember this formula because on a test we're not going to have this formula to look at here. So to remember this formula, we're going to go ahead and put two parentheses and then we're going to write S O A P, so SOAP. So the S represents whatever the symbol starts with we're going to keep it the same, so it's going to stay a, a plus symbol. And then the O represents opposite, and then the AP represents always a plus sign. So SOAP helps us get the symbols that go in the parentheses. The next thing that helps us remember what the terms are, I say to myself, square together square. So I remember that what goes in the first parenthesis is going to be this x right here. So that goes here. And then since 2 times 2 times 2 gets us the 8, that's what will go here. And then we're going to square together square. So we're going to take this x right here and square it. Squaring means we're going to multiply it twice. So that's how we know x squared goes there. Then we're going to go ahead and put the x and the 2 together using multiplication. So an x and a 2 together would make 2x. And then we're going to square the 2. And that's where the 4 comes from. So this mnemonic will help us get the answer we got here by plugging the values into the formula. So let's try this again. First thing, we ask ourselves how many terms are there? So there's one. 2. So if there's two terms, then we're going to ask ourselves, can you think of anything times itself three times that will make 125x cubed? So for example, 5x times 5x times 5x would result in 125x cubed. Then we're going to ask ourselves what times itself three times is 1. So 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. So that's how we know that we are going to use SOAP, the SOAP method, because we found something cubed 
that results in the original problem. So now we're going to set up our parentheses. We're going to write S O A P, and again that helps us remember the symbols. So the S means keep it the same. So since it's a minus, we're going to keep it a minus. And then the O means opposite. So since this is a minus, this is going to be the opposite. And then AP means always positive. Okay, so what goes into the parentheses here and here is what we found here. So we're going to put 5x here. And then we're going to put the 1 here. And then I remember the dance. It goes square to remember what goes in the first spot in the second parentheses here. Square, together, and then square. To help me remember what goes in these spots here. So we're going to take this 5x here and square it. So 5x squared looks like this. So 5x times 5x is 25x squared. Then we're going to put one of each together. So we're going to take a 5x and a 1 and put them together by multiplication. So 5x times 1 is 5x. And then we're going to take this 1 here and square it. And that gets us our factored answer. So to write it a little bit nicer, here we go. Okay, so let's take a look at this example here. So when we look at this example here, we see that there's a GCF. So we're always looking, the first two problems had no GCF, but when we look at this, 2 and 54 are both even numbers, so we can definitely factor out a 2. They both have A, so we can factor out an A, the one with the smallest exponents of 1, so we're going to have just A in the front. And then they both have a B. So this is our GCF. Now we learned in class that when the first term, or the, one, the leading coefficient of the polynomial, when it is negative, then the GCF out here must also be negative. So, since 4 plus 1, that's 5, is higher than 1 plus 1, that means that our leading coefficient, the one that is in the front here, since it is negative, that means we have to factor out our GCF must also be negative. So now we're going to factor out negative 2AB. So we're going to have A cubed here, because 3 plus this one would make 4. And then we already have a b. And then negative 2 times positive 27. So these, so when I m distribute this, I get my original problem here. So our GCF is going to get brought down every step of the way. It's not going to go away. So we have negative 2ab. And then we're going to ask ourselves how many terms there are. So if there's two, which there is two, one here and one here, then we're going to ask ourselves, can we find squares or can we find cubes to get us a cubed and 27? So since a cubed can be found by multiplying a times a times a, and 27 can be um, 3 times 3 times 3, that's how we know that we are going to continue with cubes, so we're going to use our SOAP method. So we're going to set up our parentheses, and we're going to write S-O-A-P. So S helps us remember to keep it the same, so we're going to have a plus here. O is for opposite, so if this is a plus, then this one's the opposite. And then A-P means always positive. Okay, so then we're going to have an A here and a 3 here. Then we're going to have A times A here, so that's A squared. 
Then we're going to have one of each. So we're going to have an A and a 3 here. So A times 3 is 3A. And then lastly, we're going to have 3 squared here. So I remember that as square together square. So to put that all together, here's our final answer. First thing we're going to ask ourselves, is there a GCF, which there's not. So now we need to ask ourselves how many terms. There's one, two. So since there's two terms, we're looking for either squares or cubes. So since 3x times 3x times 3x results in 27x cubed, and 2y times 2y times 2y, that's how we know we're going to use SOAP method. So we're going to set our parentheses up like this. S-O-A-P. And that helps us remember, keep it the same. So this is going to be a plus sign. O here for opposite. And then A-P for always positive. So again, SOAP helps us get all the signs correct. Next, we're going to take the 3x and put it here. And then we're going to take the 2y and put it here. Okay, then we're going to do the dance. Square together square. So we're going to take this 3x and square it. So 3x times 3x, that's 9x squared. Then we're going to put them together. So we're going to take a 3x and a 2y and multiply them together. That makes 6xy. And then we're going to square the 2y. And that makes 4y squared. And now we have a, our binomial is factored. So first thing we always do when we factor is look for a GCF. So 4 can go into 32 and 4. They both have x's in common, so the smaller one is x squared. And then they both have y's. So this is our GCF that goes in the front, and it's going to be factored out. So then we're going to have x cubed plus 8 in the parentheses. Because when we distribute our GCF to both of these, we get back our original problem here. So now we ask ourselves how many terms. There's two. So when there's two terms, we either need to look for squares, a difference of squares, or a sum or difference of cubes. So since x times x times x gets us x cubed, and 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, that's how we know we can use the SOAP method. So this 4x squared y is not going anywhere. We're going to bring it down each step of our work. We're going to set up our parentheses and we're going to write S-O-A-P. And that's going to help us to keep the symbol here the same, so it's going to stay a plus, and then opposite of whatever this is, and then always a plus sign or always positive. And then we're going to take an X and then the 2, and then we're going to do the dance, square together square. So we're going to square x, so that would look like x times x, so x squared goes here. Then we're going to put one of each together using multiplication, so an x times a 2 is 2x. And then we're going to square the 2. And that is our factored answer. So first thing we always do when we factor is look for a GCF. So 4 can go into 32 and 4. They both have x's in common, so the smaller one is x squared. And then they both have y's. So this is our GCF that goes in the front, and it's going to be factored out. So then we're going to have x cubed plus 8 
in parentheses, because when we distribute our GCF to both of these, we get back our original problem here. So now we ask ourselves how many terms. There's two. So when there's two terms, we either need to look for squares, a difference of squares, or a sum or difference of cubes. So since x times x times x gets us x cubed, and 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, that's how we know we can use the SOAP method. So this 4x squared y is not going anywhere. We're going to bring it down each step of our work. We're going to set up our parentheses, and we're going to write S-O-A-P. And that's going to help us to keep the symbol here the same, so it's going to stay a plus, and then opposite of whatever this is, and then always a plus sign, or always positive. And then we're going to take an X, and then the 2, and then we're going to do the dance, square together square. So we're going to square x, so that would look like x times x, so x squared goes here. Then we're going to put one of each together using multiplication, so an x times a 2 is 2x. Two and then we're going to square the 2. And that is our factored answer.